Greetings friends of the Summary Club, today we will briefly get acquainted with Gary Chapman's mega popular, and more importantly, mega useful book The Five Love Languages. The Five Love Languages has of course already sold over 5 million copies in 40 countries worldwide, and is a New York Times bestseller as well as a personal development book aimed at helping people find solutions to emotional problems in relationships. Well, Gary Chapman himself is today one of the most popular authors of books on relationships. He is an American-born author, but of course his books have been translated into many languages. He is also the head of a couple counseling company and runs his own radio program, which is also devoted to discussing relationships and marriage. Moreover, Gary Chapman's personal example confirms the concept of a happy relationship. He and his wife have been married for 47 years. Together with his wife they have raised two sons and now enjoy their grandchildren together. So it is worth listening to the advice of such a man in matters of love. And so, in the book The Five Love Languages Gary Chapman argues that falling in love is easy enough, but building a lasting happy relationship is incredibly difficult, especially in today's world. The problem is that many relationships ends after a period of falling in love. You try to show your spouse your love, and it's as if he or she doesn't notice anything. Maybe you just don't speak the same language? Perhaps your husband wants you to spend more time with him, but you instead cook a sumptuous three-course dinner every night. It is true that not everyone knows how to speak the language of love that their partner understands. There are many articles, books, as well as TV and radio programs on the subject of relationships, but despite this, many couples still cannot find the secret of preserving a marriage because they keep forgetting one very important truth. We most often do not understand and do not accept the love and care of each other because we speak different love languages. Doesn't it remind you of anything in your own relationship? In fact, that's why we've prepared a brief summary on this timely and really enlightening book, The Five Love Languages. Many people underestimate this problem, and most people speak the language of their family from childhood. Later on, many of us make a considerable effort to learn a foreign language, which becomes our second language. But if we meet someone who speaks a different language, there is a language barrier between us. In order to communicate effectively with people from other linguistic cultures, we need to learn their language. The same applies to love. Your love language and your partner's love language can be as different as Russian and English. Therefore, we need to learn to speak our partner's primary love language in order to express our feelings toward him or her more effectively. Through his experience as a family and relationship therapist, the author has identified five basic languages of love and the types of people to whom they are best suited. The language of love for such people is words in various forms, encouraging words, words of support, respectful requests and expressions of gratitude. Words help such people feel that they are important to the other person. If they don't hear words of gratitude, they don't feel loved. So praise such a spouse more often to bring him or her joy. To increase the effect of positive words, compliment your spouse in the presence of colleagues or relatives, tell other people something good about him or her. This will give great pleasure, raise the importance in society and among friends, and your significant other will be just crazy about you. The most important thing for such people is to spend time with their partner as often as possible. And it is joint activities and common affairs that are important, not just physical presence nearby. After all, two people can be in the same room, but not be together. Spending time together means giving someone your full attention. The main thing for such a person is to feel that you are together, that you pay attention to each other. And a common cause helps to feel that as clearly as possible. Joint activities can be anything, such as sports or dancing, work, nature recreation, and in general any activity that creates a sense of intimacy. There are some people who see gifts as a basic expression of love because gifts are a visual representation of a person's thought because in order to give a person a gift, you have to think about him or her. A gift is also a clear sign that you care about the person. It is a visible and physically tangible symbol of love that has emotional value. So if your spouse's native language is gifts, he or she will value every gift you give them because he or she sees it as love. A person who speaks this language of love is most often indifferent to the material cost of gifts, but more importantly to the attention. And of course, if gifts are so important to your spouse, you must learn how to give them. According to the author of the book, this is the easiest language. You can buy a gift, find one, or even make one yourself. It is good if the person whose love language is help knows how to voice their requests. 
otherwise, the partner will find it difficult to please him or her. But one can always ask, how can I help you? And this will be the most sincere affirmation of feelings for the person whose language is help. Helping that takes up your time and energy when you do something for another person is a clear expression of love. Actions such as mowing the grass, cleaning the kitchen, bathing the children, and walking the dog are examples of caring. And of course your spouse belonging to this type of people will be beyond happy if you start to help him or her as often as possible, but if you constantly slack off from their duties, then worth telling person feels that your love for him or her has already grown cold and your family life after that pretty quickly fall apart. Many men already think that touch is their love language as they often confuse it with lust. But love through touch is not just about intimacy. For a person whose love language is touch, kisses, hugs, fleeting touches, and other tactile contact are very important. If a person vitally needs to be hugged, held by the hand or kissed on a daily basis, then his tongue is definitely touching. Accordingly, as you see, it is very important to know your partner's love language if you want to replenish his or her supply of love and favor to you. Then he or she will more often feel that you love them and your family life will be much longer and most importantly happy. Accordingly, as you see, it is very important to know your partner's love language if you want to replenish his or her supply of love and favor to you. Then he or she will more often feel that you love them and your family life will be much longer and most importantly happy. Accordingly, as you see, it is very important to know your partner's love language if you want to replenish his or her supply of love and favor to you. Then he or she will more often feel that you love them and your family life will be much longer and most importantly happy. Well, if your partner keeps asking you to do things for him, it means it's important for him to know that you still love him. In general, you got it, make a list and start doing item by item. If not everything, then at least show that you are trying and that his or her requests are very important to you. You won't believe it, but sometimes it can be quite enough to make your loved one really happy. It is not often important not your fulfillment of your requests, but your attitude towards them, because this is how your partner can even subconsciously for himself to check how much you love him. This is, so to speak, a little test that you must pass in order to maintain a warm relationship with your significant other for as long as possible. Otherwise the person may stop feeling that you love him, even if you think you are doing everything right on your part. Maybe they expect you to touch them often or help them around the house, but you give them gifts instead. This, of course, is also nice, but it is more pleasing to you than to your other half, so he or she sooner or later will feel that in relationships you love yourself and do not notice the real needs of your loved one. In general, if you try to talk about your feelings in your own language and not in the language of your partner, sooner or later he will subconsciously start to feel coldness and disregard from you. In this case, you may not even know what you did wrong, and your loved one may also not be able to explain it to you in plain language. In fact, as happens in most modern families that are constantly falling apart for this reason. Do you feel less loved than before, or does your loved one feel that your love has grown cold? Now you know what the main reason is. And of course find out your own love language as well, so that your partner can meet your needs better as well, because a happy and strong family will not be possible even then. To define your love language, you need to answer three questions honestly. What hurts you the most? Lack of help, gifts, words of encouragement or touch from your partner? Or when you feel that your spouse is not giving you enough time? What do you most often ask your partner to do? How do you yourself most often express your love? The same questions should be asked of your partner. It is good if your expressions of love are the same. If not, you have to learn not only your own language but also each other's love languages, otherwise you will be in trouble. You know. That is, in fact, our main conclusion from Gary Chapman's five love languages. I hope this summary will help you understand your basic love language as well as your partner's basic love language so that you can express your feelings towards each other as effectively as possible. We also encourage you to check out other relationship books on our channel, especially one of the most acclaimed in the world, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. And friend, don't forget to subscribe to the Summary Club for becoming more successful, educated, kinder and wiser every day. Save hundreds of hours and dollars spending on boring regular education. Feel free to write your opinions and questions about each video. We read all the comments. In addition, go to our official website, where you can find reading materials or watch other videos on channel and links in the description. All the best.